I would like to make a toast to God. Don't you think that's a little pretentious, Pepper? My father was a sharecropper, and I wasn't able to finish college until I was a grown man with a wife and three children. And I prayed to God that he would let my children do the things that I couldn't do. And he has answered my prayer in some kind of way. I don't even know how. He come down through Georgia and laid his hands on me and my wife and gave us Martin Luther King. And now the King family will go down, not only in American history, but in the history of the world as well, because Martin Luther King is a Nobel Prize winner. I want to tell a story about myself. One that I'm ashamed of. It's about, I believe it was the first time Martin spoke publicly. It was for high school debate. Martin worked so hard for it. He spoke so well. Everyone attending was so sure he'd won. But the other boy was white. Martin was black. Of course, the white boy won. I never saw Martin so disappointed. So when he got home, I said, Martin, you're a little Negro boy. You're not going to change this world. I was trying to save him from what I thought could be heartbreak. I was so afraid for him. I almost did what millions of black mothers do all the time. Our son's less. But one man can make a difference. And that's why we're here tonight. <laughs> Modern man has built gigantic bridges to span the seas and gargantuan buildings to kiss the skies. And yet, in spite of these spectacular strides in science and technology and still unlimited ones to come, there is a poverty of a spirit which stands in glaring contrast to our scientific and technological abundance Oh, we have learned to fly the air like birds and swim the sea like fish. But we have not learned the simple art of living together as brothers. Wait a minute! What are you doing? Don't hit him! Don't hit him! You're not going to stop us from our constitutional right to vote. I've been looking down a line and I see people here who have been in jail on felonies. That's what I'm looking at. Many of those who have felony actions against them. Many of those who have felony actions against them, they have them because Sheriff Carruthers made them felony actions, not because they were rightfully arrested. Ah, wait, you don't have to beat him. Wait a minute. What are you doing? Don't hit him. Don't hit him. You don't have to beat him. Right, on your arrest us. We come here to register the vote. Arrest us if we're wrong. Arrest us if we're wrong. We have a right to register the vote. I graduated from a university in the state. We go, we go, we leave. We go, we go, we leave. May I come in? Oh, thank you. Thank you. Great honor. Great honor. Thank you. How many people get here for a demonstration? 30 to 40 at least. Well, that's We want to register. And then have less people. Are you all right? I got a hard head.
No registration today. Why not? There are no registrars working today. Well, I would like to go in and see if the registrar is in the election office. Take my word for it. There's nobody in there. We'll be back. Some of these people here have been arrested for felonies. Every person here is a citizen who has contributed to this community and has led a decent life and deserves the right to exercise his constitutional privilege. We're going to stop you from using that club in the shadows and make you do it in the glaring light of television. There's no registration today. I can't promise you that you won't get beaten. I can't promise you that your homes won't be bombed, but I can promise you that, that we'll be back. If they won't let us register, we'll go to George Wallace. And if he doesn't listen, we'll appeal to the legislature. And the legislature doesn't listen, we'll dramatize the situation by marching by the thousands to places of registration. I'll go to the president, and if need be, we'll go to jail by the thousands. We need a voting rights bill. But we just passed a civil rights bill. Are you going too fast? People have a constitutional right to vote. But Congress isn't ready for it yet. And we'll have to make them ready for it. We're planning a march from Selma to Montgomery. tell you this officially, of course, but uh, march. We we'll need you to send in federal troops. No. No, not yet. You know what happened on the bridge. Not yet. If we call out the troops now, it'll just make a martyr out of George Wallace. Those are 50 of the most dangerous miles in this country for a black man to march. If you want to voting rights bill, you're going to need pressure. A lot of pressure. Something big. Something spectacular. Something like Birmingham. People died in Birmingham. <laughs> Bailey's pasture. And what about security? I've taken care of them. I want to see them. We've got to be sure that there are no snipers on the roof. We can get a clear view of those roofs from the alley, right? Okay. We march in the morning. Is Johnson sending in troops? I don't know. You don't know? Anything can happen in any one of those 54 miles. Andy, there's nothing we can do. There's something you can do. Jimmy Lee Jackson's gone. Medgar Evers, Kennedy, Tom Moore. Now we've got to tip the Klan has hired someone to kill you. But it isn't just the Klan. You think the Nobel Prize has helped? It's made it worse. You're the biggest target in this country. Well, Damon. Well, Judge Johnson has given you permission to march. Two abreast. And only 50 of you. Why? That's suicide. Why? To guarantee traffic safety. All right. We will march, only 50 of us, and two abreast. We will march from here to the steps of the cradle of the Confederacy to ensure that everybody has a right to vote. Now, Damon, give me Archbishop Icarus. Give me Walter Ruther. Give me Bishop Millard. Give me every member of the SCLC and anybody else you can think of. They won't be able to march with us on the highway. They can march with us to it. And anybody else who wants to join us in Montgomery later when we get there. If we get there. 